Queen C4 yeah, looks I was like gonna... black draws comfortably. Yeah, after here, you have to go back, so that would be... But an example of a careless check. Let's go continue with that line. Okay. Uh, E5, Queen C4, King E3, Queen C5, King E4. Right. And now, I think Queen C6 is a draw, but if you play right. Queen C4, Knight D4, I'm not sure what kind of territory we're in, we're in anymore, because suddenly there's no checks, and white is super advanced. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it could be that there's only like one or two moves that hold. Now, yeah, now we already saw that position. Only three moves were drawing for black and everything else was losing. So black has to be careful. And look at this. He's, Magnus has switched which pawn his rook is behind. And at any moment, he could just push e5, right? He doesn't have to push the f pawn. He can choose the e1. And he gets to dictate the action here. But This is going to be so hard for Jan to hold because this is, he's just going to keep pushing this. Forever, yeah, and, I think and anytime it get there is no fifty move draw or three move repetition here. The position will slowly advance, and at some point, the critical moment will come, and the queen will have to find all the accurate checks to hold. Oh, I think that at some point we will see a position where black has only one or two moves to make yeah, a draw. Yeah. Exactly. At some point, we will have this moment in the game where black yep. has to play super accurately. Right now, he can probably make any move, and it's still objectively a draw, but that's not going to last forever. Yeah, and that's why the table bases. Although useful, it is a little bit misleading on the complexity of this position. I would lose this position with both sides. <laughs> That's definitely not true. White has no risk of losing unless you blunder everything. Uh, Have you ever Rook, seen me play chess? Um, I'm not going to answer that question. But he, here, the knight went to g3. So it's clear he wants to start pushing his pawns. Jan says queen d2 check. If you go king f3, there's queen d1. And then the rook can come back to e2. The yep. knight is perfectly placed on g3. So, Fabi, so I look at this, we talk about careless checks. I mean, rook e2 to block the check. You can check on the third. Well, not well, right first. now. King, king f3. Oh, okay, sorry. King f3. In the live position. Check here. Rook e2. And if you give a careless check, like queen d3 and king g4, the yeah. king's escaping. You go queen d7, I go f5. Right? Yep. I, I can push forward. And this is what I was talking about in terms of careless checks. You know, And if you keep careless checking, you might careless check yourself off the board. Yeah, we're probably still in draw territory, but white is starting to advance. So after king f3, rook e2, queen b3, I suspect he'll play king g2. The king cannot be checked there, and then he can try to push his pawns in relative peace, at least for the moment. At some point, the checks will begin again. But for the moment after king g2, black doesn't have a checking square, which doesn't lose the queen. Right. And then white will play f5 next, and then e5, and then the checks will begin again, and we'll have to start calculating stuff. So... Jan is still playing quickly there. They both have a healthy amount of time. And we're about to break the yep. world record for longest world championship game. We are nearing history here. Will it be a decisive game today? Uh, it's, I have no idea how to answer that question, but I know that either way we have broken history here in the 2021 World Chess Championship because the move Rook to D2 officially makes this game the longest game in World Chess Championship history. These two guys made it happen. Maybe he doesn't want f5. Maybe he wants rook to d5, and then the king sneaks around, king h3, g4, and the rook and knight cover checks from pretty much everywhere. Do you think either of these guys, or ask it this way, do you think Magnus knows that this is objectively probably a draw? I would guess yes. That makes no difference to him, but I would guess he's probably aware that with best play this should hold. I I don't think they 100% know that, right. okay. but I think they assume, because this sort of endgame is known with, well, let's say not with E and F, but with other configurations of pawns. Yep. They assume that's a draw. They, they both don't look like either of them is thinking this game is going one way or the other right now, but that's, that's still different from, you know, knowing how to draw it or how to win it. Right. And Magnus has won with a lot less. Right. right. He's at positions where you've seen even material, and he just squeezes, inches forward, finds a little hole in his opponent's position, and is able to take advantage. But one of the critical things here is e4 is protected, and even if the move queen takes f4 were possible, were legal, then rook f2. Mm -hmm. So the black king, while it probably needs to establish itself in front of the pawns rather than off on the side of the board, because then the pawns just start going, it makes it harder for black to really attack the pawns, even when they're hanging, sometimes... You shouldn't take it because there right. could be a pin. And so I, I like the way that Magnus is doing this. He's not rushing, and he's leaving Jan with more decisions to make. And we see Jan bring the queen to b3. He's playing active defense here. But what Fabiano said, at some point, the king would like to 
run through h3 to g4. And in the event of rook d5 right now, you still won't be able to take on f4 even if you can attack it because rook f5 checks. So if we show this for a second, like rook d5, queen e3, king h3. Like you're not threatening the pawn f4 because it's rook f5 check. So white can try his best to run the king around this way. It's not going to be easy because black can take away the squares with his queen, but that's something that is in the cards potentially. Maybe he can also give a check first on d8. Rook to d8, king, let's say, some, some square. And the king might be a bit more vulnerable to checks. Like, now, let's say now here, rook to d5. Now queen e3 is no longer a move, right? Knight to f5 wins the queen directly. And it, it re really doesn't change so much. But yeah, let's say queen c2, and now white plays king to f3 or h3. Tries to get that king slowly up the board without allowing too many checks or a perpetual check. Right. And well, we see that Magnus grabs a piece, as we know chess players love to do. Uh, they're a little nervous. They fiddle with pieces here. And the queen on b3, it just it feels like if the king tries to escape via h3, maybe that queen comes to f3. And just make sure that while the knight on g3 is a great defender, it's not going to be able to get active because it's pinned and the king has no escape for white. So it, did, did he just push a pawn? I think he might have. No, no rook, rook d5. d5. Okay, that makes it feels sense. like a very good rook on d5. Yes. Very actively placed. It blocks off a lot of the queen's influence. So there's no... Like, the queen can't get to e6 or to g8. Right. And, yeah, I mean, when we look at this uh, position here, so where, where do you think this queen should go? Like, what's the ideal defense? I was thinking black can try to give checks, queen to b2. Yep. Let's say queen b2, king h3. Yep. Queen to h8, king to g4. Oh, so you're trying to check from the front. About yeah, it. I'm trying to check anywhere I can. <laughs> okay, so you're saying it's not careless, right? So queen b2 check? Well, it might be careless, but it might lead to the same sort of position because I don't know if black can, can really stop white from advancing the king now. Right. Queen to g7. Is there rook g5? Rook to g5. Queen to d7. Yep. So the rook can come to f5 with check. The knight can block on f5. The pawn can block on f5. I don't like the knight blocking because then the queen comes to d1, and I don't think you can stop oh, those very, checks that's anymore. That's a very good point. That the, the knight blocking, all of a sudden there's checks, and yeah, you're not stopping that. But after rook to f5... Black has to make a tough choice where to put that king. Anywhere it goes, it's either vulnerable to a check or a fork by the knight, right. potentially. Right. And it also gets in the way of black's queen checks. For example, if king to e7, maybe white plays king to g5, huh. and then rook to e5, knight f5, you see how we're slowly creeping up the board. Right, and that's the idea you mentioned before, and black had an h-pawn in some of these types of positions. Yeah. So this could be really scary. We'll hop uh, back to the live position. Seems some moves were, in fact, played. Uh, rook, to, rook on d5. And king to e7, rook to e5 was played. Yes, right. So rook... And king to f7. So the check on e5, king to f7. And yeah. I don't think much has changed. White will probably try to run the king down the board now, maybe with king to h3, or sorry, run the king up, up the board, rather. Uh, king to h3 makes a lot of sense. Maybe then the queen goes on f3, and that's sort of annoying for white. Uh, so, okay, Magnus continues giving checks because... Well, he has time, right? He has 50 moves between mm -hmm. every, every pawn move that he can make. He actually, if we think about how many pawn moves are left, we're looking at 50 moves <laughs> times a lot, which is more math than I am qualified to do. I think there's something really important, <laughs> though, about the rook being on f5. Okay. That when the king goes to h3 and the black queen comes to f3, just to, to show this, why can't play king h4? If the rook went on f5, h, f4 would be hanging with check. But after king h4, now we're renewing all sorts yep. of different options that black needs to consider, and it's really difficult at this moment. Well, and now we see rook f5, king e8 has been played on the board, and is it time? It is time. Is it time? Nope. Wait, no, we're pushing. E5. He pushed. He pushed. E5. Okay. Now the rook might go to f6. f6. That f6 square is a beautiful one for the king to slowly go up, because look at how much space white is taking away mm -hmm. from black's queen checks. Suddenly, where do you... Let's say the king is on h3 and rook on f6. Yep. Where do you check that king from? Yep. c8. It doesn't look like a great square to check from. And the king will anyway move up. If the rook is on f6 and king on h4, black has only one square to check from, which is h2. I guess right. potentially h7 as well. But it, it is interesting, I think, and instructive for the viewers to say how... We keep saying this is, should be a draw, yet white is making progress. So 
what is it about the position that will eventually be a draw? It's that white will eventually have to expand far enough that the board opens up fully for the queen to chase the king, right? And it's easier said than done, but, or, or I ask you, you guys are the grand, what, what is, I, I was assuming that's the reason, but what is the reason? This may be bold, but I think that's more likely that white wins a position like this than black yeah. draws. I'm starting to feel that too, especially with the rook coming to f6. Yeah. It, it's a draw, objectively, but it might come down to only moves at some point. Right. It might be that white's pawns advance all the way, and at that point you have only checks here and there. I don't think that that's realistic uh, for black to find. Right. It's much easier for white because he has no, there's no risk. He can just, yep. he, he also doesn't Keep have pushing. any any responsibility with time. He has all the time in the world to to advance his, his pawns and pieces. Right, here for example, the, the rook is pinned. You can play king g4 to defend that rook. And let's say black passes, then you can play knight e4, maybe knight g5. And then the king can be go king h5, king to g6. That's asking for a lot. I'm aware of that. But those are the type of things where if that king gets all the way in there, mm -hmm. you're going to not have enough checks because your king on e8 actually limits the black queen yep. from continuing to check the king as the white king marches up the board. If white gets knight g5 and king g6, I think it's over. I think that's just winning because you can not you can no longer check that king anymore. And right. then white will play like rook f7, e6, f5, and and the pawns push themselves at that point. Yeah. So yeah, we're already in that. And that's what we've been saying from the beginning, regardless of the table base, that this is a... this. It's, anyway, it's a winning endgame for white. Black check, has to find the only moves. Can we check the table base now? White wins. No. That's what it says. White wins. Oh, wow. White's According win. to the Sorry, table winning. base, white is officially Sorry, winning, which wrong. means what was the move that blew, it was right here? Queen e6, which is... Apparently, queen e6 was the losing move, and the only two moves that drew were both moves that maintained the long diagonal. And it is instructive still, even though, again, it's not, not to reiterate the point I made, but the point is you have to have your queen in a position where she's reaching the whole board, you can't put your queen in a position where her options are limited. Right. And this is still, the, the queen had to defend from g2, h2, those squares. Yeah. And for some reason, white can't advance And so the point is, much. now if the king comes up, white has moves like queen g2, or sorry, black has moves like right. queen g2. And obviously, I would lose this game as I already self-deprecated, okay? I, I, I would think, lose this to anybody. That's I think said. most of us would lose this. Yes. Yes. Look, look at the bar. Look, look at, the, at bar. the bar. Like It is officially just winning territory. Yep. And... Everybody can see it, and I think that Jan might know it because if your queen is on h6, you got nothing going on for you here. Yep. The white king is marching up the board already at h4. Maybe we'll keep going. And those pawns, what are you going to do about those pawns? Yep. I'm not going to do nothing about the pawns. They're not my pawns, Robert. And let's say queen to g6 or queen to h7. Uh, he played queen to h7, so and it's going to be similar. Okay. I want to try queen h7, rook to g5. Because I want to get that rook to g7 oh. to fully oh, cut wow. off the and black then you're king. But rook to g8 is check is a threat too. Rook to g8 is oh an immediate gosh. threat. But let's right. say the queen goes back to b1. Okay. Rook to g7. Maybe it's it's not good to cut that king off. Yeah, actually, this puts us back in a weird drawing territory because the queen is in a more it feels like uh, open board. Yeah, you know, I already messed it up and and possibly. Well, this is just so hard, but it's so obviously we're gonna seven. we're gonna be diving into all of this. Just Can remind play king everybody. To g5? King to g5 now. It's not on the board yet, though. Right, but, king, but wait, where's can he do so? Queen g8 checking or king, king to h6? h6? Yeah, exactly. And, and then fully invade with, with rook f6, f5, e6. The king on h6 can only yeah, be but, checked from h8. King g6. No, then. Queen g8, knight g7. King to e7, e6. Oh, and rook f7, and this it's over. Just, this is just yeah, nutty. Yeah, pawns go. And there's, there's no checks. You've blocked, blocked them all. So queen h7 played. King g5. Yeah, you don't want to let the queen go back to b1. We were talking about that yeah. earlier at the yeah. moment when mm -hmm. Jan only had those move, two moves that drew. So, wait, the queen takes f5 is not a threat, by the way. White can maybe play e6. e6. That's exactly what I was thinking. Queen e6. f5 is not a threat. Because of knight g7. Because a knight g7 check. So e6. With the threat of rook f7. The threat of rook f7. And you can't ever take this pawn e6 anyway with queen e7 check. Like, you're not taking this pawn. That... Can't be captured, right? But also, queen e7, rook f6. Yep, and you're frozen. Secure. Yeah, but king, no, king g4 might also be very good. King to g4 because that pawn is immune, as Robert mentioned. But I like king g5 most. That, I, to me, that feels like... That, that looked like an e6. He played e6. Yeah, that looked like an e6. Okay, he's played e6. The queen cannot capture the rook because of the fork on g7. The moves available to black are... Becoming less and less. The moment that queen 
came to the short side of the board, if you will. She cut off her opportunities and put Black in a technically losing endgame. No judgments. This was almost impossible to hold regardless, which is why we've seen Carlson Danny, one tactic I want to say. If Black plays queen g6 here, for example, a passing move, I like to move rook to f7. (laughs) Now that is threatening knight f6, e7. And if Black takes on e6, knight g7, king f7, knight e6, king e6, you king to g5, king, king f7, king f5, this is an Know your king and pawn endings, kids. It's a winning, winning endgame for what? Wow. I mean, it, it was an immensely difficult task for Jan. We've been sort of saying that for a long time now, where it seemed like Mag was pushing, pushing, waiting, finding his moments. And this is a lost position for Jan to push. Yep. And what you're saying, Danny, is so important that when the queen is close to a knight, what yep. um, my coach and five hours coach taught us at a young age, is knights are amazing defenders because it, let's say the queen was on h6, like even if the rook weren't over there, you don't have a single check. Yep. Because the knight covers f6, it covers f4, and it's blocking the h file. Yep. So knights are amazing at restricting the queen, and that's why the queen needed to be on b1, on c2, yep. all the way on this side of the board to give checks so the knight couldn't block. But now it's way too late for that. The king is coming up, the pawn, the rook, everything is working harmoniously. And Yana Pamshi, he knows he's lost right yep. now. It's one of those really instructive, just the, the geometry lesson that is a chessboard when you see a knight dominate a queen in close proximity because the queen, as powerful as she is, has no access to these long diagonals, the things that she normally does to flex muscles on both sides of the board. Oh, it's, queen g6, rook f7, rook f7. Is, f7 is winning on the spot now. Rook f7 threatens knight f6. And queen again, six is losing. This, we mentioned that the king and pawn ending we've already talked about. If queen takes Wait. e six, you fork. We just saw the bar go wild there. Maybe rook f seven, queen to h six, is What's possible. The move? Oh f- no. no. So why, why is this? I don't know that no, Eval Bar. No, I think oh, Eval Bar just. I think it was just taking a second to evaluate. No, this is still winning. What, what sometimes happens is it sees you know lines right, but doesn't go deep enough, right. and so it may think that king and pawn game doesn't see an issue that's winning. Of course it is. No. So rook f7, we use our human intuition here and... Take a yeah. breath, boys and girls. You're about, to see it is. The, you're about to see the first decisive result in more than five years in classical chess of the World Chess Championship. I expect Yanda Pomnishi to throw in the towel in this position. I really do. Yeah. And I think we will, uh, we will have... We will have blood from Dubai, as they say. We will have our first victory. Yeah, no, no bowling pins, no bowling alleys. Paul Dano, you'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, this is a problem because uh, this is going to be the end of the game. We said very early on that Jan played G takes F6. He played B5. I mean, this feels like a lifetime ago. Yep. He was playing very well, but he lost the thread, and it became a very Magnus Carlsen-esque position. Yep. And here we are. We're about to see the first classical chess victory for Magnus Carlsen in, in a world championship since 2016. We're wrong. He doesn't resign. He makes one more, one more I, move. I think F5 Maybe is two. easy enough. Yes. F5 and the knight goes to F6. Or white might just push that pawn forward by force. I think probably white is already in territory where most moves, which don't blunder material, win. Black screen will go to G1. Magnus uh, has chosen f5. White can play rook to d7 to start with. Or I think probably knight f6 also does the trick. Yeah, knight f6 it, threatens e7, and there's no way to deal with it. Well, there's a lot of checks, king. so it, it gets a bit concerning. As long as the about king can checks. hide, which I think there's a path. Because there's queen h6 there. in the end there, but um, what's, what's the most clinical way to do it here? I feel like actually rook to g7 is a very good way of doing it. Because that threatens e7 just as much because it, the rook gets out of the way. Oh, knight e7. Oh, that's, that's the easiest. That's even nicer. Yeah. He's the highest king on the same knight. idea as the knight on f6 and that it threatens e7, everyone, but this actually keeps the much easier escape route for the king. So well, The king's actually going to go to g8. Yeah. Okay. Because king. it goes to f6, so it checks in the diagonal, but you're going to go exactly like that, and yep. then that's it. I think boom, this boom, is boom, boom, boom. resign, the moment to resign. Wow. And, I mean, for Jan Nepomnesi... This is a brutal moment because in the first five games of the match, he was the one with more chances. Yep. And in this game, he also had his fair share of chances. He was the one who kept the queens on, tried to play, and then the imbalance that he created. And yet here we are, the rook, the knight, the two pawns, 
That's the end of the story here. One of them, the e pawn, is going to promote. You have to sacrifice your queen for it. That, yep. of course, is losing. And Magnus Carlsen, he's going to shush the doubters. He's put his finger to his lips too early in certain events. And there it is. There's the hand 